So hello and welcome to the Expat Pod. My name is James, your host, and today I'm joined by Anna, who we used to work together when I lived in Sweden, and we met kind of towards the end of my time, which was quite unfortunate because we played volleyball together and did a lot of fun stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't think you want to give a quick introduction of of who you are and where you're from. Yeah, uh, hello, I'm Anna. I'm from Brazil, and I moved to Sweden one year ago. And I work here as an engineer in the pool star. Great. We'll get into the podcast. In Sweden, but let's kind of cycle back uh, over a year ago, I imagine, to what made you want to live abroad? What made you want to leave Brazil? Uh, I think since I was a child, I have uh, this dream. Like, just to have this experience, you know, like, how it will be if I will live in in Europe and uh, how how is the work there, what people eat there, like, what people usually do, what... Uh, so, I always want to have this experience. What was your dream destination when you were younger? Did you have a dream destination? Was it Portugal because of the language? Or was it somewhere else in Europe? No, actually, I never realized that I've been here in Sweden before like I, I never heard so much you always heard that all oh, Sweden is so cold <laughs> like so I always uh, see myself in the USA or England uh, probably do it to the English or sometimes German because I'm uh, work always work in automotive industry and then it's like the cars things are there uh, but never in Sweden. So when you were looking for work abroad, then did you did you narrow it down, or did you kind of cast your net really wide and try and stay in the industry you're in? So did you look for jobs globally in the automotive sector? Yeah, I search on LinkedIn, like uh, the title of what I do, like software engineer. That uh, and I always want to work with electric vehicles as well. And uh, I found that in Sweden. Uh, they have more jobs opportunity and then uh, like in other countries they ask uh, if you already have the visa so here I think the the procedure and the companies need more engineer at least in my field and they can support with all the process. When you applied then did you apply just for one job in Sweden or was it a handful of jobs and what was that process like? Yeah like uh, it was kind of a really nice coincidence because the the title and the description of this job it was what I did in my final paper at at the university and uh, what I was working on so when I saw the job I think I I I thought oh it will be this or it will take uh, much time to find another one so actually I, I I applied for another jobs before but i i didn't get uh, even a no as a response because uh yeah at a, in a, it's it was in another countries and they don't even consider this so postar it was my first uh, job application and it was successful as the only the at least. How long had you been looking before you found the postal job? At what point did you go, yes, I want to go and do this? Uh, actually, like uh, since I graduated, uh, I tried to search uh, some jobs, but I found that uh, they ask at least for three years in experience in my field. So what I was doing, okay, I... Like after I graduate, I look and then I say, okay, I cannot, uh, I, I won't waste my time applying for a job uh, without I have this experience in Brazil. And then like I work three years in Brazil and as soon as it complete uh, three years, I start to uh, work searching and found. You obviously had your interview with Pulsar. Was that remote? Did you have to fly over to Sweden to have an interview person or was it all online? Yeah, all online. So I did... I think uh, four interviews. It's a lot of interviews. Yeah. Before all the process of visa and everything starts. So did you have to do a, a technical assessment? Did they give you a test in terms of software capabilities or was it just a personal interview from your... Yeah, just uh, personal and uh, some technical questions. But uh, I, I don't need to prove or 
do some test. Just uh, talk about what you know and use the right language. Yeah, and my experience. And so obviously you you got the job. What was the visa process like? Yeah, the the company hire uh, another company to help me with the process. So it's just uh, filling a lot of documents. Then need to send it to Sweden uh, Migration uh, Agency. And then after this, I need to travel to another city in Brazil, called the capital, called Brasilia. And it's too far if you compare the countries in Europe. So um, I need to go there just to show them my passport and then come back and wait for the the Sweden approval. And how long did you wait from the approval? The approval itself, it took uh, two months, but the entire process took almost uh, six months. From the day that I received, uh, that I passed the, the job interview, from the day that I arrived in Sweden, it's like six months. So it's quite a long process. And then, so obviously you you get the job, you get your visa. Then what did you need to do? Did you find accommodation? Did you, what was your plan? Yeah, the the Polestar also hired a company to help me with accommodation. So uh, I have uh, like at least once a week, I have a meeting with this company and they explain me how everything works, how the tax works here, how the accommodation works and how everything and then uh, the girl helped me like with the the main sites websites to apply for to look for and they send uh, some uh, recommendations uh, and then uh, I, I was uh, trying to look for uh, by myself as well and found uh, a great one you by yourself you found as opposed to through the yeah, then I found by myself, but the, the girl helped me with all the process because since I was not uh, here in Sweden, then uh, they have like uh, to see the apartment uh, in, a, in a person uh, to check if everything is working, if the guy is uh, real. So I, I, when I arrived, uh, they just uh, uh, give me the key and everything was uh, perfect. That's very really useful. And how was... Um... How was it moving across then? So you obviously needed to the pact. What what did you what, what were you expecting when when you when you left? I, I was really worried. I was really afraid of the cold because like everyone when you when I was telling to my friend or to another person, oh I will move to Sweden, the the first uh, reaction is oh no there there's too cold. Uh, how you handle that? So I was with this in my mind. And uh, I don't know why, but I was was really afraid. Like I, I was really have this feeling. Oh no, I will get to the airport, and if I don't find the bus or the taxi, I will froze in the street. So that was my big concern. I think when I, I was doing my packing and so on. And of course, like I was really worried to to check if the guy will be waiting for me here in the apartment and if I'll get the keys and so on. But then everything was fine. When you move, do you obviously move not alone, right? You move with your boyfriend at the time. Uh, still your boyfriend, I imagine. But you move with your boyfriend. Yeah, but uh, actually I arrived here in uh, January last year and uh, he arrived uh, two months later. So at the first time I arrived alone. And was he looking for a job when you got your job at Polestar? Was he there going, oh, right, I need to find a job? Yeah, it, actually, this was a really n- nice uh, coincidence as well. When I was doing uh, the interview, uh, his uh, ex-boss uh, called him and asked uh, if he wants to work in Sweden. And then in that moment, I, I didn't even know if I will get the job or not. And uh, almost uh, nobody knows that I was applying for this. So it was a really nice coincidence. And then uh, uh, he said, oh, yes, I think uh, my my girlfriend will have a job there as well. So uh, he accepted. And uh, that's why I moved. And two months later, he moved. It's quite scary then. How? how... Yeah, it, it's it's supposed to be that way, right? It's, uh... Yeah, it's obviously meant to be. 
Was there anything else you needed to think about before you left? What was it like saying goodbye to your family or, or the war? Let's think. It was like that time, it was a lot of things that I need to solve, like uh, cancel my bank accounts and cancel a lot of things that I will not cancel if I'm here. Say goodbye to all my friends and my family. Yeah, right now I cannot remember in uh, more things. No, and did you bring lots of uh, cachaça with you? And... Yeah, no. <laughs> no, because I don't uh, drink uh, cachaça that, that much. I don't uh, like myself. But uh, in, in this, uh, now I, I bring some because then you know a lot of friends want to try it. And here in Sweden, it's really expensive. Like in Brazil, we you, you can uh, buy one for... 10 crowns and here you buy like the same one for 200 kronas it's insane so I bring this time but uh, at the first time I didn't know about it so I didn't bring that so you're much. making some cabernets for everyone well yeah now now I know <laughs> wonderful and was there anything else you needed to think about or or do I guess um, did you need to prove uh, a level of English proficiency before taking the job or getting the visa? No, this is also was proved with only the, the interview. And also, uh, yeah, uh, I I didn't need to prove that I, like I said that I I graduate in Brazil, but I didn't need to prove that. Right. And did you need to learn any Swedish before you went or was it all? No, I, like I didn't even ask for it because I, I want uh, so much that job and I was afraid to ask it. And if uh, my my boss said, oh, you need to know, then I will say, no, I don't know. Uh, so I didn't even ask and I, I just uh, imagined that uh, just English was fine. And uh, in reality, it is like that. But now I am learning. Perfect. Well, there's nothing more to add for how you got to Sweden, I guess we can start section two. So hello and welcome to section two of the podcast, all about being there. So Anna, this is basically where I ask my guests about their uh, experiences um, when they've kind of moved to a new place. So for instance, what, what was your first impressions of Sweden? Obviously you moved during the winter, so you alluded to before that it was very cold you know what what did you think when you first arrived yeah definitely for sure when i first arrived uh, my impression was oh here it's really cold and i was not uh, prepared enough for that because like uh, if you buy some uh, winter clothes in brazil it's not the same if you buy some winter clothes here like winter in, Bra- in brazil it's like uh, 10 degrees at least in my city so this was my first impression. It's really cold, but also like everything was so organized and I, I could find easily how to go to my home. And in the first time that I arrived in the airport. What was your impression of work life? So obviously you, you arrived to work. Did you have any time between arriving and starting work? Did you give yourself a week or a few days? Or? Give myself two days. So it was enough just to start the documents here, uh, understand like buy everything in the supermarket. And this also was a trick part, I would say, because like I didn't have anything in the fridge. So I need by myself go to the supermarket to buy a lot of things. And I was alone. It's like uh, 10 minutes walking and then uh, like, yeah. Uh, I went to the supermarket, buy some things, and when I arrived home, I realized, oh, that's not enough. So then I need to go again to the su- supermarket, buy more things, and come back. And uh, that uh, time was, uh, you know, like everything is different. Actually, it was uh, quite a funny thing that happened. I was just searching, okay, what is the basic thing that I need to buy now? Okay, water is the basic thing. But I, I didn't know that you can drink water direct yeah, on the type here. And then, okay, yeah, I went to the supermarket and I just want to find water. And I, I couldn't find. 
because I, I only find like sparkling water or water with lemon or water with apple, like this uh, flavor water. And I said, what the hell, where is the like normal and natural water in this uh, supermarket? And then one day later, I, I found that, uh, I found out that it's do it too, that you, everyone drink tap water here. Because in Brazil is not like that, and uh, this is like one. Now it's the stupid for me, but uh, I didn't know that time. No, yeah, well, it's quite an interesting point. Yeah, I guess a lot more in Europe. It's it's tap water is okay, but you see not, not everywhere in the world has the same situation. So it's yes. Yeah. Uh, did you find that it was very uh, expensive compared to how Sweden? For me, when I when I moved, like vegetables were so expensive in Sweden. Yeah, like. Uh... Because when you move, you still convert everything, right? You didn't receive your first payment and you just convert from what you used to spend in Brazil. And here it's like uh, twice the price, I think. And uh, especially m meal, meat and, uh, and uh, alco alcohol as well. Because in Brazil, you can uh, buy everything you want uh, related to alcohol, like in supermarkets, in uh, some small store, but uh, not here. Here it's really different. And there is like a specific uh, store that sell this. And uh, for and the, the time it's quite uh, like, I think it oh, it is open until seven, right? And then we arrive from work like uh, six. So you really need to plan uh, if you want to drink uh, during the weekends. Did you also find when you were going around the supermarket that it took a lot longer because you had to translate everything? Uh, obviously, fruit and veg, you can see what it is, but like what, what's in certain breads? I remember I bought, the, I bought some bread thinking it was bread and it was some uh, like malt loaf thing and it's quite disappointing. Yeah, like every time I... I I went to the supermarket, it's uh, like, I feel so tired, be like mentally, it's like, it's not, it feels like I run the marathon or something like that, because like everything, every single thing you need to think uh, so much and uh, you need to search uh, and translate and check in the internet if it's the thing that you want and uh, how to buy things, also how to pay is different. So yeah, and the first day, uh, remember now it was uh, so exhausted. And uh, someday I just uh, wake up and uh, went to this card bracket to fill in some documentations, but uh, and then arrive home. It's like one hour thing. But uh, when I arrived home, uh, I felt so tired that it feels like, uh, I don't know, it's so different. But uh, you are tired, like you are mental tired, not uh, physically. Yeah, because I guess for you, you're you're communicating communicating in English as well in Sweden, where their first language is not English, and your first language is not English, but your common language is English. So it's even more of a of a headache. Well, when you started work, then how how was that? What, what what did you feel like the working culture was like compared to what you had back home? Like uh, I was afraid to because. When I was telling my friends that and search on the internet as well, like uh, how is it uh, to work in Sweden? Uh, like everyone said that uh, people there are not so friendly because, like in Brazil, with like the 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 persons your colleagues, the person that you work with, like uh, later on they will become your friends, and in one week and or maybe three weeks that you are working together, you are later hang out together and uh, going to some place and uh, hang out during the weekends and so on. And they say that uh, usually like Swedish people d don't do that and uh, they only talk about work and so on. So that was what they told me. But uh, it's turned to be a completely different. Everyone in my team was so friendly and uh, there was uh, some uh, immigrants there as well and uh, ha half of them are immigrants half of them are are born here so i think uh, it was a great mix young people as well so more friends we could uh, hang out yeah it's very true i see the uh postal was quite good at having a lot of uh, internationals uh, my my team was quite sweet 
but um the yeah it seems like your sales was, was really good and i think uh there's quite a few british people in the office which made me feel more like home as well going back to to your i guess outside of work how have you found it to socialize have you have you joined any um any clubs and stuff yeah uh lucky uh the brazilian community here it's uh really nice i think uh we have some events so like this we play volleyball together every weekend and i think two months after i arrived there was a event only for women, a uh, brazilian women that are, are working or studying or are in sweden so there uh, i could uh, know more brazilian girls and uh, most of them are my friends now so the brazilian community is really nice here i would do say do you have many uh swedish friends or friends from other countries like outside this uh, brazilian communities uh, the the sweden swedish people that i know it's from work so they're kind of uh, friendly as well and uh, sometimes we hang out to, together and and there's also, yeah, in this Brazilian community, there's, I, I found here a, a forró classes. There's a typical Brazilian dance. Like in, I think in my first year, uh, I tried everything that uh, was possible to, yeah, to know more people and... Uh, Go to a lot of after works. You have different experiences. Yeah, after works as well, that we have almost every month. So, yeah. It's a good, uh, it's a good thing, I think. Uh, it's the first time I'd seen that word work, that it was a formalized company-wide, hey, we're all going to this bar or this pub or this rooftop on payday weekends, so everyone can, everyone's welcome to come. It was quite a nice event that was put on. Yeah, exactly. What did you, did you have a list of things that were typically Swedish you wanted to do, like go to Ikea and have, have Swedish meatballs or... Yeah, and it was uh, when uh, I think in when we first met, uh, you said that you have like a to do list here. I mean, I quite have. Uh, yeah, I also want to try things here, and I, I've tried some. But I, one thing that uh, it's in my to do list is to have this uh, frozen bath. You know, go to sauna and then you can swim in the sea though. Like right now, it's probably perfect if you go uh, on Hissingen. If you go, this is quite specific knowledge to Gothenburg, but there's a, there's a, there's, there's water and there's like, there's walkways into the sea. So you can go and just go swimming at like three degrees. And also curly that we try together. But uh, now, now my plan is to learn how to ski. So probably uh, in two weekends, I'll be skiing, try, uh, trying at least. It's really good fun. Yeah, I think you'll really enjoy it. Yeah, and also like in every to-do list, I think from everyone that lives here is to check, to see Aurora and uh, Northern Light. So this is still in my to-do They occasionally will come down to Gothenburg, but I think you have to go up north, right, really to enjoy them. But, but have you done much traveling and obviously living now in Europe as opposed to living in South America? Have you taken the advantage of being so close to so many other places and going traveling? Yeah, like my... F- I think when I first arrived uh, here, I was like uh, searching for a trip every weekend in another country because this is uh, a lot different from Brazil. Like from my hometown, from the place that I used to work in Brazil, it's like five, six hours driving. And here, like there are so uh, these uh, low cost uh, flights that you can travel in one hour, like from Sweden to different uh, countries. And it's so cheap. Uh, So like uh, last year, our plan is to travel at least to one different country every month. So we we visit uh, 10 different uh, places. That's incredible. So yeah. And um, still this year, my plan is to continue that. Because yeah, it's so easy. Yeah, you can... uh, get a flight like uh, Friday afternoon and then come back on Sunday morning like you're doing this weekend yeah and if you yeah and if you go to Poland for example like you spend uh, less money than if you spend the uh, here in Gothenburg going out for the weekend yes, that's, that's ridiculous and how are you enjoying the language obviously they have SFE or Swedish for immigrants 
in uh, available. Uh, are you still doing that? Are you enjoying it? Yes. Uh, when I so when I start, I apply for SFE, and uh, it was uh, quite nice in the beginning. I was doing twice in a week. But uh, then after I start after the su before the summer, and then what happened is like uh, after the summer, they kind of reset the classes and start from the beginning again. So I say, okay, now I need to start from the beginning what I already did. And uh, it was uh, that uh, Polestar was paying for uh, Sweden, Swedish classes as well. So now, and I was doing like uh, three times a week, two in SFE and one that uh, Polestar was uh, paying. Then I think, okay, maybe three times a week to do Sweden, it's uh, too much. And uh, since SFE starts uh, from the beginning, so I decide like to stop at SFE and continue just uh, with Polestar classes. And that's what I'm doing now just uh, once a week and I think it's a great p uh, pace I don't need to hurry that much uh, in learning Sweden Swedish so it's okay for me once like two hours once a week it's uh, okay sometimes I use uh, Duolingo during the bus still glitch rise to do every day I get on the bus and do my Duolingo <laughs> uh, I thought I was really good in Swedish and then I try and speak it with my colleagues and then they're like what no, that's not Swedish. You're speaking Danish. Yeah, uh, but I, I just, uh, I just know a few words. I'm uh, doing at the beginning level. Is there anything else that you've noticed or enjoyed? I guess are you, how are you dealing with homesickness? Like, obviously, obviously, your family are all back in Brazil. There's quite a big time difference. How, how is that? How are you managing that? Obviously, li being with your boyfriend must be really good because you're having to do a long distance relationship, which is very difficult. The, your family and things how, how how often do you speak to them and yeah usually i call them uh once a week i talk to my mom and my father and uh, during the week we test text each other in whatsapp and uh, i think it wasn't uh, that hard in the beginning because i was uh, i was really looking forward to came here and to know and everything was new and then you get okay like every day is a new different uh, experience and so on. But uh, after six months, I think for me, it, uh, then you have the routine, your, your own routine and the things are almost the same. So then I think, he, and then you start uh, like in Brazil, it's uh, good weather all the time. So like uh, my friends that are there celebrate uh, parties and uh, special uh, events. And uh, then you realize, okay, I'm not there. But uh, what I did is like, I, I stopped think that way and uh, try to be grateful for, for the opportunity that I'm having here. And uh, it's been like uh, 10 years that uh, I'm not living with my mom and I'm, I'm living in another city from my hometown. And I uh, usually travel to my hometown once a month. And now I travel once a year. So, yeah, just uh, get used to it. I think now it's uh, really easy. Like you can uh, talk uh, with your family using video calls. So it's you feel that uh, you are close to each other with these video calls and so on. Quite completely. It's, uh, it's amazing. I think mean, like our parents' generation have to write to each other or at least a call and no one had phones with them all the time so you couldn't just if they weren't there they weren't there so yeah and my mom say okay sometimes they say oh and no, it feels like you're you're still in uh, the city that you used to work uh, it, I, uh, sometimes i cannot believe you are like 1000 miles from brazil how are you enjoying it are, are, are you are you enjoying your time in sweet uh, have you found it challenging have you found it exciting yeah challenge uh, in the beginning but uh, now I'm enjoying a lot. I would say it's, I think the quality of life that you have here, it's really good. Like you can uh, go to work and then be back. And uh, I, I, I remember that uh, sometimes in Brazil, we work uh, like 10, 12 hours per day. And then uh, when you arrive home, you, you don't have energy to do anything else. 
just eat and go to sleep. So here I think it's uh, better. Like I arrive from work and I still have energy to go to the gym or sometimes play volleyball, sometimes like go shopping, do other things. And uh, during the weekend, like it's so, it's so nice when you can just travel to another country and uh, know different people, different cultures, try different food and so on. So I'm enjoying a lot. Have you found the food in Sweden? What have you thought of it? Uh, it's not <laughs> so good for like uh, in response. the city that like at least the, in the city or in the state that I live in Brazil, it's uh, one of the most delicious food in the world, I believe. And right now that I, I, I just arrived like two weeks, I miss so much my mom's food and uh, like everything that we have there compared to here. Did you fill up on all the feijoada and the picanha? Yeah, picanha. Yeah, picanha. It, it was nice because picanha we found uh, here now. Oh, brilliant. But it takes like eight months for us to discover picanha here. And now every every week you're having it? Yeah, never quit. <laughs> There's a Brazilian barbecue. Amazing. But well, the, the summer is probably wonderful for barbecuing because there's so many available places like in Del Juan or... Yeah, and you can go to like parks and so on. But the late, l- latest uh, summer, I, I didn't know about picanha here. So it will be this first uh, summer with picanha. Is there anything kind of else you want to really add on and pretend for your time in Sweden that that's kind of stood out to you or yeah i think uh if i should if i can highlight the thing that i liked here i think first is the quality of life and the summer here in the summer it's amazing and uh the the safety that we have here like uh that i don't need to worry uh about uh my home and uh worry about if uh, someone will stole my phone and my things like I can arrive every time that I want uh, in my home and walk here and it's really safe and this is I think this feeling like for a person who already know how it's to feel well safe and that you once you feel safe again it's uh, one of the best feelings that uh, you could have is that something you talked about with your friends who are also from Brazil or from other parts of the world yeah the, these two main things. I guess we can go into section three, which is a review of your time. So hello, welcome back to the podcast. Welcome to section three, what about a review of your time. So Anna, I often ask my guests, if you can go back to before you moved and tell yourself one bit of advice, which would help your time, what would it be? It can be, well, have better winter clothes, perhaps or... yeah i think definitely it's like be more prepared for the winter here because like in the beginning like uh yeah uh, i feel cold several times that uh now i don't uh, feel anymore because i bought the uh, proper clothes and and uh bring uh foods and drinks from brazil yeah, I can I can imagine. It's, but I used to, I don't see when I when I kept going home to see my family, I would always come back with like British, British snacks or like food from home, which made me kind of feel like I had that comfort back. Um, but it's probably different because I lived literally by myself, and my girlfriend was staying in the UK, so uh, a lot of my evenings were spent like on the phone every day. <laughs> yeah, like three advice and bring a. Uh proper winter clothes and uh, drink as much as you can uh, food and drink from Brazil. And bring your boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this helps as well. I guess what's been your favorite moments living living abroad? Like uh, for me, it is during the weekends here that I have the freedom to go everywhere that I want. Like it's really nice with this full start as we can rent uh, uh, Polestar, almost for free, I would say that. And uh, then you can go and just explore what you want. Yeah, I use that way too much, I think. I, a lot of weekends, if I had family visiting or friends, I'd be like, okay, I'm borrowing a car for the weekend and going uh, to pick them up from, from the airport and 
but parking was anything that really, really was expensive. Yeah, expensive and annoying, like to understand that. And uh, sometimes uh, every parking spot is a different app and so on. Yeah. What advice would you give someone who is leaving from Brazil to go anywhere in the world in terms of to help them move there, but also to help them integrate really well? I think it's to search and uh, talk a lot with uh, people that are already there in the place to get some tips. At, of course, there is like uh, some tips that works for everyone, but also there are some tips that it works only for this specific uh, countries. So I would say like for Brazilians that are coming to work in another place, just uh, try to find another Brazilian that it's already in this place. And I think it will be really helpful. Yeah, well, that's a very good point. I guess what advice would you give to yourself going forward if you were get to move somewhere else? Would it be a similar thing of finding more Brazilians somewhere, or would it? Would you? Would you like to live somewhere else? Yeah, I would say like, don't be afraid. I think one thing that I realized here, it's like when I arrived here, I didn't know anyone, and uh, then like, you no, know, like uh, it's. There is some bad things, but also some real good things to be in a new place that uh, no one will judge you, no one will care about you, what uh, are you doing, which uh, clothes are you wearing, and uh, these kind of things. But uh, the advice that I would say, it's like uh, definitely try to, yeah, don't be afraid of uh, doing anything and uh, try to push yourself to do different things, then you find some uh, different peoples, different people and uh, different friends from all over the world. That's great. Is there anything else that you, you'd you like to share with, with, with people who will be listening to this in terms of your experiences or your, your review after the year? The advice at least that I... Uh, I always have in my mind it's like sometimes you are tired because to move abroad and to work in different places it's really yeah it's tired at the beginning but uh, you just need to keep uh, pushing yourself uh, from doing things and uh, explore explore different places and different activities because then you will find different people and uh, I think when you do something that you're not used to do or different things, then you you understand better yourself and uh, what you like or what you don't. That's a good point. I think um, definitely understanding yourself uh, is 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 very important to your needs. So if you if you can notice when you're feeling lonely or when you're feeling a bit sad, and and having those um, those safe spaces or those. I guess um, triggers which, which you which you can avoid, um, especially if you are by yourself, which your family c- can't see. It might be useful to have. I know um, when I was living away, my girlfriend and I had a, a phrase. Whatever, if we text each other a certain phrase, that so we would just know that one of us is feeling really bad, and it'd be a way of just you know, okay, let's go and have a talk about it. Let's go and solve this problem, or just you know, get on a FaceTime and. And, and just, yeah, have a catch-up, really. Um, yeah, understand yourself. Uh, sometimes you just need to uh, one weekend only with yourself uh, watching a move alone. And, uh, do you have any, like, uh, things like that? So when, when you're missing Brazil, do you do you put, I don't know, some, some Brazilian TV show on or some music or... Yeah, usually when I really missing home, I call my friends and family, which is the, what I usually do. I think I think that's everything from 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 my side in terms of questions for you. I don't know if you if you want to share anything more. Or... Yeah, for me, I just want to thank you for this conversation uh, always. and this opportunity. It was really nice. Yeah, well, obviously, thank you for for being like being a guest. Thank you for using your Sunday evening just to talk to me. Obviously, we uh, we've been meaning to do this since before I even left Sweden, which was back in August, and it's now January, so it's been quite a while. But yeah, I, yeah, just thank you again. Yeah, good that we found the time to make it. 
yeah perfect and yeah i just want to say i really really enjoyed your conversation with regards to the journey you had to go through in order to 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 even leave it obviously the the six month wait for the visa for me it was three months but i thought that was too long but it was significantly longer for you and um it's really quite interesting to think about timelines when you know we live in a world where everything is so on demand that we can get things the next day or the next few days to think well actually no if I want to be somewhere in the next five years I'm going to start thinking about it now because it might take a year for me to be able to actually transition across somewhere so and you'll get anxious uh, in the while you are waiting for this Mm. but but uh, in the end everything will be fine um, what a great what a great sentence to leave the podcast on. So as always, if you you have found something insightful for Mana, which I'm sure you've found so many things insightful, very clever person, um, then please do let us know. Please do comment. Please do please do share and and get in touch. Uh, as always, please do subscribe to what we do, and every week you can learn something or hear a great story or listen to someone talk about a new country which is always fascinating in my eyes anyway it's why i'm doing this but anyway we'll see you next time the expat pod